Hello everyone, welcome to Wisdom Wednesday. On Wisdom Wednesday, I try to share some tips on baking with you. And today I want to talk about the vegan trend. So as you know, we try to, you know, make a lot of things vegan, you know, um, vegan brownies, vegan chocolate cake, uh, vegan brioche, right? What next? Well, maybe vegan croissant. It's not possible. It's not impossible. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure that my live stream um, goes on all channels without any audio problems. And I am trying to make things work here. So give me a minute to get things down. I believe... I want to share my screen with you today on um, the latest paper that we have. And uh, this is available through the link down below where I placed it on our academy. And this is our paper. I hope you can see it. This paper is our 15th paper in the academy. We talk about maintaining the natural flavor in baked goods and then if necessary, replace it. Okay. All right, so I just wanted to make sure that uh, audio. Thanks for giving me a collapse. I just want to make sure my audio is good. So um, we naturally have flavors in baked products, right? The Maillard reaction, the caramelization, those naturally come from the bread or cookie or cake product right? Um, mostly cakes and cookies require an added flavoring and most breads and pastry products don't, okay? Until you get into veganizing the product. Yes, I created a new word, veganizing. You're talking about replacing butter in a product so that you can target the vegan market, okay? So you can do that through artificial or natural flavors. And in this paper, we tell you what is the difference between those two. And thank you, Zoom Essence, for sponsoring the research and writing of this paper. The examples of flavor compounds found naturally in food is vanillin, which is for vanilla, okay? Diacetyl, which is for butter. So anything that is diacetyl smells like butter. Limonin, which uh, replicates the smell of lemon. Isomyl acetate, which replicates the smell of the aroma of banana. I remember when I was an intern in, um, back in the mid-90s, and I took a rotation shift at the sensory lab. Oh my God, I had to smell so many isomyl. And at the end of that particular week, I was so happy to get out of the lab because I was done smelling banana products. But I tell you, there's so many versions of this isoamyl acetate um, and in different concentration that gives you so many banana flavors, okay? Methionol, which is potato chips. Can you imagine that? That's a natural flavor. And pepperin, which is black pepper. Yes, these are examples of natural flavors. In this paper, we go into um, the nitty gritty of how do flavor works, you know? Um, how they interact with your olfactory system, where they travel to, 
and how it's perceived in the brain. Yes, your brain is the final sensory target for all these amazing flavors. So one of the biggest issue with using just any natural flavor from any company is it's lost in high heat application. The problem with that is many bread products and pastry products, bread especially because bread is baked at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, pastry is baked at uh, somewhere between 350 to 375, um, you get more uh, uh, flavors being flashed out in bread products because it's just so high. The internal of uh, the internal temperature of bread products go as high as 200 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so that's really high. Um, not only the Maillard reaction is activated during baking, which leads to cross reaction between flavor molecules the sugars and the amino acids inside the dough. The components of the dough, like gluten, protein, starches, and fibers, physically bind to the flavor molecules and prevent them from their release. Not only that, dough conditioners like l 16 or potassium bromate would chemically react to flavor molecules. And lastly, minute levels of metal ions catalyzes the production of oxidants from oxygen. I know you're like, oh, that's too much for me to understand all this chemically jargon. But basically, let me summarize this by telling you the little elemental ions in there will bind with your flavors to produce off flavors and rancid flavors. So if ever you do develop, you do develop, I like to say that, whenever you develop new products and you smell this metally aroma, and it's very common, it's because of these oxidation and chelating agents, okay? You just need to keep an eye on that, especially when you go from artificial to natural products. Now, the people at Zoom Essence would be able to help you with this rancid smelling things in your new product if you use their Zoom flavors, okay? They should be able to tell you what's wrong with it and probably recommend some form of chelating agent for you, okay? So reach out to Zoom Essence if you are developing of natural flavors. Okay, so some of the things we need to do to be able to handle natural flavors. Higher concentration. Hey, if all else fails, 2x the amount, right? But why 2x when you can add EDTA to chelate the metal ions to prevent the off flavors? You can also use plated flavors with plating agents like starch and salt. And lastly, you can also use spray dried or encapsulated flavors. Those uh, kind of um, encapsulated carriers would be able to melt at higher temperatures and then release the flavors after that, okay? All right, so, um, oh, I wanted to show this bun. This is a gorgeous bun. And it is a brioche base bun. So the flavors are just amazing. Drawback of some approaches. We, we talk about what are the downfalls in this paper and what you can do um, against those downfalls. All right. And of course, we want to know what zooming is. What in the world is zooming, zoom essence? Why do you call them that? Why do you call it that? Um, it is a actual patent that was patented by Zoom Essence that relies on temperature as low as 43 degrees Celsius to produce flavor-rich encapsulated powder. Okay, so they process their flavors at such a low temperature that they lose very little during the process, unlike a lot of 
um, other flavor manufacturers who spray their spray dry their natural flavors. Okay. So they go into case studies on what they have found out for their process and how the amount of um, uh, chemical components left, aromatic components left at the end of the bake. <laughs> I was just saying um basically you have um plenty to choose from when you try out a uh natural flavor uh from zoom essence and especially with their vanilla and cream flavors um, this is a vanilla cream flavor, which really smells like, uh, let me, smells like a custard cream to me. And, um, those of you, um, who have not tried Zoom Essence, and if this is the first time you smell it, you're probably like, oh my God, it does not smell like anything that it's familiar to me. It's because it's really concentrated. Okay, you really need to use just a little bit, just a tiny little bit. Don't don't use your normal portions of flavoring. Okay, talk to your Zoom Essence technical advisor, and you'll notice that a little bit goes a long way, and that's the way things should be. You know, you're talking about flavors, and you don't need to add a lot of flavors, not more than 0.1 or 0.2. I mean, how much cost do you want to go up on your total formulation, right? Don't do that. Okay, so um, natural flavors that can replicate butter in your formulation, especially like a brioche formulation. And if you're successful in that, what else? Okay, so butter replacement, it's not just flavor. It's flavor and texture as well. So the texture would have to come from a high fat solid fat, right? So what can that be? Either it's a palm oil or a kind of shortening. Some people ask, can I go coconut oil? But I try to steer away from that because coconut has an aroma to it and palm oil doesn't. I would recommend a shortening replacement because shortening is 80-20. 80% 80 fat, 20% water, just like butter. Okay, the composition of shortening is the same as butter. Okay, so I would go butter, I would, uh, sorry, I would go shortening, and I would use some form of um, emulsifier. I'm thinking mono and dye, mono and dye glycerides would be the best, but for those of you who are against mono and dye glycerides, yes, I know there's a whole world out there that hates mono and dye glycerides. It's okay. You have cyclodextrins. Look up cyclodextrins on Bakerpedia, Bakerpedia it, and you will know it's a new emulsifier that's going to solve your problems as well. Okay? You need butter replacement. You need emulsifier. What else do you need? Aroma. So when you take out butter, you need to put in this three things. Okay? Don't forget. It's important when you develop for the vegan trend. Okay, to learn more about natural flavors, come to our next session. It's going to be on gluten-free cakes, I believe. And if you follow the Bakerpedia Academy link that I placed below, you can sign up for the class for free. And this again is sponsored by Zoom Essence and Grain Millers, okay? So thank you for joining me today for Wisdom Wednesday and how to replace butter. I will see you again back tomorrow. I will share my Thursday thoughts on the Academy, okay?
Take care, everyone. Bye.